in order to make your drawings more dimensional and really think about bringing out a lot of volume and dimension <clears throat> in the form, whatever form you're drawing, um, I'm gonna use an egg, and this is what we're gonna be drawing this week, eggs, as kind of a perfect example about how light falls over form when it's illuminated, obviously, by um, a light source. And also the light source grounds it more on the ground plane. So the ground plane is basically just the cardboard that it's sitting on. Okay, so there's this can be variable in terms of different concepts, but for the most part, the, the five or six properties of, of light that fall over form are in order what is usually called the center light, which is right back over here. And it might not be really apparent in the video, but right up in there would be the highlight. So there's the highlight and the center light. And then that turns into what's called the half tone, which is starting to happen like right around the outside edge of the center light, which is coming out here. And the half tone usually turns into what's called the oculator, um, but that's kind of like too, kind of didactic of a term. So we're just gonna refer to this as like the core of the shadow on the form itself. Okay, so we've got the center light, the highlight, the half tone turning into the core of the shadow. And then if you look right underneath, there's reflected light coming off the surface right underneath, right underneath there, the reflected light. And then we've got the cast shadow, the cast shadow. And then we've got the core of the cast shadow, which is the darkest part in the whole entire drawing. Um, so when we're using charcoal to define this and bring all this information back to the page, we're only gonna be using our vine charcoal um, and we're only gonna be using the black pastel and maybe our charcoal pencil right underneath in that core part where it's the darkest in the, in, um, in the, in the cast shadow itself. And one thing I wanna really just emphasize is if you notice, we're gonna be able to create the outside contour edge of the egg itself by, you can see how there's a transition, how it's darker back here, and then it gets a little bit lighter as it moves forward into the foreground. But we're gonna use our vine charcoal to define that back edge. It's really, really, really important. We're not gonna outline it. We're gonna define it with that background value, that tone that's changing in the back, that's darker. That's gonna define that contour edge of the egg. Um, and then also our shadow is gonna start defining it as it turns around this way. And then we're gonna isolate the reflected light because the cast shadow and the core part of the cast shadow is gonna define the underside of the egg that way. So we're gonna do everything we possibly can to not outline the egg at all. Because the minute that we outline it, it's gonna become completely flat. So we're gonna try to build up the dimension of it um, by, by the outside value around the backside here, which is darker, and then the shadow moving this way, then isolating the reflected light and creating the bottom edge, the contour of where it's sitting on the ground plane um, by defining it with the actual cast shadow. For class today, you're going to use a half sheet of drawing paper, half sheet of drawing paper, which is gonna be approximately 12 by 18. It's just half of your regular drawing paper. And then you're gonna tape off two separate, you're gonna do two drawings on this half sheet of drawing paper. So the pictorial space for each one of these is approximately five by eight inches. It does not have to be exact at all, but I do want you to tape them off because I do want you to have a border. So obviously if you're using a one inch tape, you're gonna have a one inch border. So again, the, the, the two pictorial spaces for the two drawings you're doing are five by eight inches approximately. And you're gonna have room on the side um, to kind of start breaking down your vine charcoal and experimenting with your erasers and stuff like that. So I want you to be able to draw on the outside before you start drawing on the main parts of the drawing. For this drawing, we are going to be using the softest vine charcoal that you have, your vine charcoal, your soft sticks, um, or your willow charcoal. You're gonna be using a little tiny bit of your black pastel. You're gonna be using your black charcoal pencil, but not until the absolutely very end. Don't, don't even 
don't think about using the charcoal pencil until the very, very, very end. And <clears throat> your kneaded eraser, and then your white Statler eraser, and then your click eraser, and then your blending stumps, or some tissue paper, or your chamois. So those are all the tools that you're gonna use um, for this drawing. You're not gonna be using any white charcoal pencils. Any white that's gonna be in the drawing is gonna be the white of your, of your paper. So it's really, 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 really important when you're using your vine charcoal that you, again, you don't draw with it like this, like you're using it like a pencil. You want it on the side here, around the drawing, you want it on its side, start softening it up on its side. You want to use the side of it. You don't want to, and, and don't try to fill in things really fast. When you lay down your vine charcoal, do it in a very, and you don't have to use a lot of pressure either. It's not really important to use a lot of pressure. You want to do it in a really soft, gentle, circular motion like this. And, and you don't want to just try not to be like really, really hurried about it and trying to get it over with and really fast and all that kind of stuff. That It'll end up giving you a more kind of fluidity and the transitions will be smoother, okay? So avoid going like this or going like that or this or, and, and just, you know, use it on its side and then just in a circular motion, take your time and just fill out the space and whatever tone you're gonna lay down, just do it extremely slowly. And, and then when you're blending it, you can either blend it with your fingers or you can blend it with a tissue or you can blend it with your stomp. But again, with all of those things, try to keep it uniform. Try not to use different amounts of pressure or different, um, <clears throat> different degrees of pressure or anything like that. Just try to keep everything very uniform. You're gonna to wanna to build everything up very, 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 very gradually. So with my vine charcoal, what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna wanna have the egg be the main subject of the drawing. And as you can see, I am barely applying any pressure at all, barely any. It, it's almost like you're gonna wanna have like a ghost when you're laying out the shape of the egg, okay? Now, when you're trying to do this, if you think that the shape is not right or the contour you didn't get quite correct and you want it at least this big you want enough space around the egg because we want to be able to develop i want to be able to show you how to develop like i was saying before the darker part to create the outside contour so don't make it too small and then don't make it too big um, because you're also going to want to have your cast shadow in the drawing okay and make sure that you, you get the, remember the direction the cast shadow is gonna come off the contour of the side. It's gonna fall right underneath it, like so. And it's gonna come back around like this. Okay, so it's, it's basically elliptical coming off the egg. Okay, so again, when I lay down with my vine charcoal, I'm barely using any pressure at all. Barely any at all. So I want the shape of my egg. I want the cast shadow. Um, I'm, I'm not even going to touch. It might not be able to be able to see as easy in the video when I pull back a little bit. But there's basically that's going to be the highlight right here, and this is going to be the lightest part of the whole egg. Okay. I also want to isolate my um, <clears throat> my reflected light. So if I want right off the bat, I can kind of just very again. I'm, I'm barely, it's barely, you, you almost want these like first shapes that you're laying down for the egg itself, the cast shadow. And then what I'm doing is just the, what will be the main shadow line. You, you want them to barely be discerned. You want them so light that they, that they barely even register. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to create the edge of the egg by bringing in the background value, which again, you can see is right back here. Okay. So again, I'm using the side, I'm using the side of my vine charcoal and I'm laying it down in a, in barely using any pressure.
Now, if I need to add more to this later, I will. But for right now, I'm just trying to get a tone back there because I want to try to create the back edge and the contour of the egg itself. And I'm getting a little bit of my wall. These are the, you, if you, <coughs> if your paper's not on something entirely flat, that's why I'm getting little fluctuations on my studio wall in the back there. But I'll, I'll try to make sure that I can manipulate those so it'll be clearer in the video. Um, but as you can see, I'm just doing it very gently and very softly. And I'm taking my time. I'm not trying to just fill it in really fast and um, you know, getting it over with as fast as I can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just, just for the purposes of the video, I'm just gonna try to blend around the background. So again, when I'm blending, whether or not you're using a blending tool or your finger or a tissue or your chamois just make sure you blend it like in a circular tone like a circular way like this don't go like this or like that or like this or do it really harsh or do it really fast and uh, it, the more that you do that the, the less uniform everything's going to be and the more you're going to get all these like very annoying fluctuations in the tone in the back and the more you're gonna get frustrated that it's not turning out kind of like how you're seeing it. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring a little bit more down here like this. So again, these little imperfections right here, which are not gonna show up in your drawing because you're gonna be doing it on a flatter surface or because of my studio wall in the background. But you can see if you use too much pressure um, that that can become very problematic. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to clean up this edge with my click eraser. And I'm gonna bring out that edge of the egg. So that's gonna be the lightest part of the whole drawing. So again, what's going to happen is that I'm not going to end up touching this at all because I don't need to. So if for some reason, this when you laid this down and initially when you did it, if it was too dark, then it's going to be you're going to have a problem because then it's going to look like a <laughs> it's going to look like a really severe um, like line going around. That's why you're trying to create it with the with the actual fine charcoal. So and then then per, for the purposes, I'm just going to lay down a tone that's going to be a lot lighter that falls into the foreground in front of the egg. So now I'm going to lay down the value with my vine charcoal again with my vine charcoal not my black pastel and not my charcoal pencil I'm laying down a gray a dark gray with my vine charcoal and then this will help me separate the cast shadow and create this bottom edge right here. Um, and again, if I want to get rid of that, I'm going to come back in with my click eraser and I'm going to try to get sharpen up this edge. You can also use your Stoutler eraser to do this. Um, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect that we're going to do be drawing these all week so you're going to have plenty. I'm just it's more about creating a contour edge of the of the form of the egg itself um, without outlining it that that's the main thing that I'm concerned with today more than anything else um, so now I'm gonna 
blend this gray. Now I also, I realized that when you blend your gray with the vine charcoal, because it's so soft that you can see it's trying to lighten up, that's fine. I just want you to get down the shape of the cast shadow. Um, the other thing that we're gonna do on the side is we're just gonna try to very lightly, with barely any pressure at all. I, I just, I, I just wanna keep, I know it's kind of annoying that I keep stressing that. It's just the problem is, is that if you go too dark too fast, it's really, really, really hard to be subtractive and go backwards. That's why you wanna build it up as gradually and as sensitively as you can in the very beginning. Okay, so I'm, now I'm gonna put on that shadow on the egg itself. And I'm blending out, see it, so where it's blending in the light, I'm gonna blend that edge so it's not too, it doesn't feel like a line. Even though it looks like very line-like, you know, it looks kind of heavy, I'm gonna to try to blend this out as much as possible. I'm gonna blend this this way like that. Then into here. Okay, I've also isolated the reflected light that's coming off the underside part of the edge and coming up there. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm going to now, I'm gonna add a little bit for the core part of the shadow, I'm gonna add a little bit of my black pastel. Right underneath, right where it's going, sitting in the core, right where it's sitting on the ground plane, I'm not gonna spread it out this way. Because what I'm actually gonna do with that is I'm gonna blend out my black pastel into my, into my cast shadow because that gray of the vine charcoal is only going so dark. So now I'm blending out the, the, the little bit of the pastel I had. I'm blending a little bit more out into the cast shadow. If I feel like it needs to be amplified a little bit more, I'm gonna lay down a little bit of my black pastel. And then I'm gonna blend it back in to the cast shadow. So I can amplify the entire value of it, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna do another um, time lapse and kind of clean things up and then I'm gonna do the, the last thing at the very end where I'm gonna try to show the, the little tiny details. So at the very, very, very end, <clears throat> if you want to use your charcoal pencil, this is, you're only going to do this at the very, very end to tighten up right underneath where the core part of the shadow is and just try to just very slightly blend it right back in to your cast shadow. You can tighten up that edge right there. And you can also, without outlining, you have areas like this, you can come up right to the edge. I'm barely using any pressure at all. Barely any pressure. I'm gonna to try to bring out this edge a little bit more. And I'm just gonna have the value, I'm not drawing a line. I'm just having the value, the dark value, come right back up to the edge of the egg. And I'm gonna blend it back into my cast shadow. Um, and if there's little areas, <coughs> like right on the front here, where I'm, I can use my uh, click eraser just to kind of just very lightly. And again, just really think about the sensitivity and the pressure. Because if you do this too hard, it's, you're going to start losing control. Um, you just have to really think about the sensitivity and the pressure. So I'm just going to try to clean this ed edge up a little bit more. So the most important thing about this is that you're going to be drawing one egg that's going to be illuminated by a light source, pref preferably like a desk lamp. It's got to be something that can be very close to the egg. 
And the main thing that you're trying to do is to create the volume and the shape of the egg with value around it. So you're creating all the contour with value around it and value following its contour in terms of its dimensional form. And then also you're creating an edge of it with the cast shadow and the core part of the cast shadow. And you're not leaving the background light or white of the paper. You're trying to do slight transitions in the background. So I wanted you to do two drawings, but if you end up just doing one today and you spend the whole class doing it, I'd much rather you prefer go really, really, really slow. Really think about all these different things that are happening with the highlight turning that's coming <clears throat> surrounded by the light, which turns into the half tone, which turns into the shadow and the reflected light and then the core part of the shadow and then the cast shadow. Um, as long as you really think about those properties that are falling over the form and you're trying to manipulate and bring out the dimension, um, that's, the, that's the most important thing more than anything. And most importantly, again, starting off really, 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 really lightly and not outlining anything. It, the only thing you're going to be outlining with are your click erasers in, in terms of being subtractive to clean up edges. And, and then that little part at the very, very end where you're gonna to wanna to maybe use your charcoal pencil and you can see um, there's no outline here. It looks like it might be a little bit here, but this is the core darkest part of the shadow. So you, it doesn't really end, end up looking like a line. Don't outline in some area like this. This is just a darker value back here. But if you start outlining this edge, it's gonna flatten the whole upper part of, of that part of the, of the egg. So remember the final thing is you're gonna take your drawing outside. You're gonna spray it with your fixative you're not gonna spray it inside. You're gonna spray it with your fixatives. You're gonna wait um, a few minutes and then you're gonna take the tape off. So if you do a second drawing and you have time and you feel confident and you wanna do another one, what I want you to do is I just want you to change the direction of the light source, okay? So I want the shadow, I want the cast shadow to be going the opposite way um, before the cast shadow obviously was going like this. So for your second drawing, I want the light source to change and I want your cast shadow to be going like that. Okay, and that's only if you have time. And then we are going to take off tape like so. okay and again try to just wait like five minutes which I did not do um, to take off the tape and what what that this will also ena enable, enable you to see what happens where you can see the edge and you can see it opens up the pictorial space in the background so it creates depth <coughs> Um, surrounding the egg. It gives it more volume and dimension for the whole drawing. 